Is your village looking like this, but you want it to look like this? Let's change that. In this video, I'm going to give you my best tips and tricks on how to efficiently collect resources, build wonders, and decorate your Smurfs village. It is quite extensive, so stick through the whole video and I promise you won't miss a thing. Before I want to begin, I just want to clarify that there is no right or wrong way to play the game. Literally just play however you want. This is just how I have learned to play the game and this is what works for me, so it is going to be quite a grind when you start playing the game. It does take time to accomplish even just one wonder, so you have to be patient. But these are all things that I wish I knew when I started playing. When you're dropped into the game, you are given a number of coins and smurf berries, through which time Papa Smurf, Brainy Smurf, and a few other smurfs are going to give you tasks to accomplish in the village, planting crops, placing items, buying things, just to get you familiar with the game. But whatever you do, don't try to spend all your coins and smurf berries in the first little bit. Work on completing the tasks and whatever they're asking you to do because then from there you will unlock more features, more biomes, and more different things that you can use for your future village. But while you're doing this it's important to remember to just have fun and enjoy the game because there's a lot of fun dialogue, a lot of different fun features that they have added since the start of the game so you have to enjoy it and not think of it as a big chore. At one point Papa Smurf will ask you to use to get the Homnibus uh, totem which is basically a big book full of different items that you can get that will give you a crystal statue that rewards you with resources every 24 hours. So for example, uh, Smurfette, you get her hut in the space, you get her little items, and you get six wood every 24 hours. There's so many pages like this that you can even see that I haven't even completed all of them. So. I want to remind you and I want to stress that this is a very long process that even I haven't completed. I'm level 90 something I think, 82. I'm level 82 and I still haven't completed all the different pages in the Homnibus Tome. Through all of these many different pages you get coins, stone, wood, and stardust. Now, at the end of it, if you complete every single page, you will receive a total of 43 wood every day. Stardust, you would receive 43. Stone, you would receive 47. And die, you would receive 26. So that's a good amount of resources every day that you could collect just by completing these pages. So as soon as you're able to buy this tome and start working on these pages, the better. I, I didn't start it until late, like at least maybe when I was level 50. So it was a long time since I started working on these. Like even I don't have a handler smurf, but it would tell you where you could get the hut and where you could buy it and how much it would cost. So this would be 30 smurf berries in the mountain. Okay, that's not too bad once you have the smurf berries. Or this one is the manticore, 2000 coins, but I think you need resources to build this, so be careful. Other things like the cowboy smurf, like these are pretty easy to get because you can get it in your main village. I get like emperor swoof and this uh, sphinx. You have to build this because this is a wonder. So this will take extra time to build. So keep in mind when you start working on something, go through the pages, see what works for you because I quickly did all the things that I knew I could accomplish, like the ones that um, were easy. Like for example, pirate smurf, I had to get his hut and I had to get this little boat that you can purchase in the book. This island you have to play his scavenger hunt game that will reward you this island eventually. It does come on pretty early in the game, maybe I was just lucky, but I was able to get his island pretty quickly. So this is Game Smurf. This I only found out recently, not that long ago. Once you have different mini games on the mountain, and I think it's in the village, you can play their games and get these different items as a reward. And as you can see, you do get a statue as a reward, which rewards you five stone every single day. So it's similar to the tome, but it's just uh, the game Smurf. So I did complete Camper Smurf, and that was the easiest one to do. However, I haven't completed Chili Smurf as well as Detective Smurf. I would recommend getting Game Smurf's hut when you are able to play on the mountain, or if you want, you can start by playing Chili Smurf's minigame or Detective Smurf's minigame. And those are available to you in the huts menu for a number of Smurf berries. But again, when you start off in the game, it's very hard because you're not given as many Smurf berries, so you have to kind of pick and choose which will benefit you the most. So for example, the Game Smurf, the detective Smurf game, 
this is what it is. So you play it, and there are clues on the wall. As you can see, there are uh, fingerprints. You collect the fingerprints, and I have five out of seven, so I need to find two more. Uh, there it is, two right there. And I get a little lamp. It's not much, but I think if you end up paying more with the Smurf Berries, you might get more exclusive items that will help you complete the cards. And I have a collection of uh, statues right here, so as you can see, I'm getting my rewards every single day. So it works out, and I think the Emperor Smurf actually gives you one Smurf Berry a week, so that's actually a little extra tip that uh, is useful to know. One thing I do want to mention, there is a cheatsy kind of way you can get extra money. Uh, it's something that I ended up paying for because I ended up supporting the developers who make this game. If you get Finance Smurf, it's like a big bank. Let me show you what it looks like. This is what you can technically get as an exclusive offer, or you could get it by purchasing it when it shows up in your exclusive offer menu. And you do get it. There are bank items you can get, which you can see I have right here. It's a golden mini hut, a safe, and some gold bars. So it does offer you XP, but it also gives you money. So it's like 50, 500 coins for the golden one, the golden hut. And then for the mini bars, it's 250, and the gold safes are 750 coins. Jokey obviously gives you a gift every day, which could result in resources. It doesn't give you much, but it still is a good addition to your goal. Don't forget to check your boxes every single day for potential rewards or resources or anything. It's important to do it because, for example, now I just got a boost on my... Blue, magic blueberries. It doesn't really give you much, but you could end up getting a good amount of loot. Like, for example, I have Santa's boot slide, bunny leaf, slime serpents, and even every day it'll give you a good amount of stuff. So, or you could spend the Smurf berries, which would give you guaranteed loot. You do get three items, but it's a gamble. So, would you rather just have one or three? I just end up using the free one because I don't want to waste my Smurf Berries. As you see, it costs 60, so I don't want to squander my money right off the bat. But it's okay because once you have a good momentum of Smurf Berries and money, you can obviously... I think I've spent 60 Smurf Berries for items before. It could be good, it could be bad, it could be something that you're looking for. It's just a big game of chance. So there are world event games that you could play that help you get resources quickly. For example, there is this one. I have never bought her. I do have Santa Smurf. I have Party Smurf. No, I don't have Party Smurf. I have Grandpa Smurf's Village Hut. You can do Greedy's Gingerbread Oven, Jack a Smurf, or Jokey Slay, Little Ghost and Chest, Enamored, or Grouchy Smurf. So these are things that you can spend Smurf Berries on at the beginning of the game because it does reward you from about 3 to 25 number of resources. So if that's something that you're looking for and you want to quickly get resources fast in the beginning of the game, then I would recommend maybe doing something like this because had I done this earlier, I think maybe I would have more resources than I do now. But again, it's just like how much do you play the game? Do you want to play every single day? Do you want to spend hours playing? Because once you play, I think it takes six hours for it to reset. So it's like a twice a day kind of thing. So if I play in the morning, I'll do it. And then in the evening, I'll play again. And then I'll have another chance to do these world events. Now for coins, in the beginning of the game, you don't start off with a lot of smurfs and you don't start off with a lot of props either. However, what I ended up doing was getting Farmer Smurf. So he's a very vital part to the game because he helps you efficiently place and pick up crops. And also you can see that around his hut there are highlighted plots which makes nearby crops worth more. For example, if you want to plant all crops, I like this feature because it also shows you how much you'll get in return of spending. For example, if you did a five minute with uh, green peppers, if you did green peppers for five minutes, you only get 1540 coins. Obviously, you could get more based on how many uh, plots you have. I don't have as many plots as I do Smurfs. I normally do Golden Corn only because it gives me the most amount of money with, within a short amount of time. So yeah, it gives me 2,600... Oh, sorry. I looked at the wrong one. 45,000 coins 
for 1,210 coins. So that's a pretty good deal. Also, I have all the different, all the stars highlighted. So that means I collected all the different boosts that I can for the golden corn. And you can get these by doing the Game Master Smurfs gift boxes. When doing crops, I recommend doing something that would last eight hours. For example, if you're going to sleep and you have work or something, then you would rather do something longer so then you don't miss your withering time. Also, if you do end up spending more time on the game while you're playing or you're doing mini games or something, blueberries are always a good thing to do because it's free and you do get coins pretty quickly within 10 seconds. There was a time that I accidentally overspent because I didn't realize I already purchased something. There was like a snail that you had to buy and I kept tapping because I thought that I didn't buy it. So then I lost all of my money. Like all the thousands of coins I had was gone within seconds. So I ended up having to grind and plant a bunch of blueberries until I had enough money to purchase other things. So don't make the same mistake I did and keep an eye on your money. <laughs> so for example, now I'm gonna purchase my corn and it'll do it for me just like that. One other thing that you could do is the anti-wither crop hut. I got this a few months ago and it has been a lifesaver. Keep in mind, when you buy it for one area, it will only serve purpose for that one area. So if you plant something in the island or the mountain, it will not work there. So it'll only work in the village because I bought it in the village. Another handy smurf that you could use is the fireman smurf. And this will serve you a lot of good purpose when you have a big village with a lot of different XP items. It will be tedious to just tap every single one every single day every few hours, but instead you could use Fireman Smurf because um, once he's upgraded you can obviously have these tr options to pay Smurf Berries for bonuses or just have a three which will give you well, I don't have any current XP or gold to be picked up, but it will pick it up for you. So it'll save you a ton of money and time. You can get it in the island, the mountain, village, of course, grove. And for the planet swoof, you would have to get the anteater. So quickly, let's talk about wonders because wonders are the most tedious thing to do in the game, I think, because each wonder could take about like a few days to a week to complete. And I know starting off, you don't have that many resources, but it will tell you to complete, I think it might be the weather machine or this barn. The earlier wonders took less resources to build than the newer ones. So for example, well, the newer ones would be 700, 700, 150, 250. So it's very expensive. And I know I can't do this right now because I don't have Stardust, but regardless, it does take a ton of time. So be patient and I think for me, it took me at least half a year to even get a few wonders done. I did mess up a lot in the beginning, so obviously I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so Reporter Smurf comes in pretty early, early on into the game, and then it gives you a calendar that you can then collect rewards every single day or items. However, if you get his hut right here, it is Editor Smurf. It increases the re daily reward by 15%. It's not much, but if you find that it is worth it, then you can get it. I ended up getting it because A, it's a pretty cute hut to have, and B, it's very, I don't know, maybe it does work, maybe it doesn't, but I have it. You can get Postman Smurf, that's his name. So he actually gives you VIP rewards every single day. Um, this is totally optional. You definitely don't have to do this. I spent money on the game, so I actually completed my, where does it even say? There's like five or something stars. I like, see it shows you the different um, items you can purchase that would give you the stars and how much stars you would get. Once you complete the number of VIP stickers, whatever it's called, then you can get the postman smurf. So I did just tell you the legit ways you can get smurf berries and resources, but you can do a little cheatsy thing, which is traveler smurf. And he is also introduced into the game pretty early, so you can utilize him when he is available to you. It only costs like a couple thousand coins to purchase his caravan. However, this will give you an ad to watch. Watch it if you want, you don't have to, but once you do, then let's just wait this through. Okay, so once you finish watching the ad, waiting for the X to show up. Okay, so once you finish the ad, you're going to be given four cards. It is gambling, so you click one card and oh, you get keys! Did you catch that? There is a smurf berry you can get and the rewards 
change every single time you do play this little game, right? Oh my god, I actually have three out of three keys right now. Let's check what I get. Yes, I do want keys. Oh, I got a digging smurf. That's cool. So you can abuse this system and continue watching videos for the rewards at the end, the card. I remember when I first started playing, I was actually using this method quite often and I got from like 0 to 100 smurf berries really quickly. It is pretty useful. It is time consuming because you have to watch all these ads. But look, now you can get... Now I got a smurf berry, see? And you can get either resources, the seeds or xp or anything and you can get traveler smurfs caravan in every single area of the game so if you are interested in something like this and you want to spend the time watching videos if you're just doing it on the side i recommend doing that because it does give you a little bit of a boost for xp resources and smurf berries so don't forget you could also use a video how to get smurf berries every single day you just got to watch the ad and then collect your smurf berry it's similar to traveler smurf but without the resource part or anything. You just get smurf berries and that's it. So I'm going to quickly take you to my island and show you the things that you can use there that will help you gain resources. All right, this is a good example, scuba smurf. He does cost quite the number of smurf berries. I think it's about 30, but scuba smurf is similar to farmer smurf, except this way you can get resources all of the time. His dives take about two hours. You can either have a five second dive or a two hour dive. The five second dive will increase your reward by a lot, but you do have to spend smurf berries to do it. This costs two smurf berries for one dive. This way you just use money. So I'm gonna collect all dives and show you what I get. I got 45, 54, 6, and 19. Lots of times you can also get smurf berries from this. So it is beneficial to have the upgraded version because it also saves you time if you have a big number of smurfs. So if I want to play smurfs, um, it costs 19,000. Of course, this is definitely something you have to do later in the game. Once you have your island and a good income of money because then after that it's easier to just like spend your money on stuff like this but you know you can get it back easily so if i place it uh yes i'm sure and it'll place it for me and now all my smurfs are going to work with a basic diving gear for two hours as you can see i also have fireman smurf here so he's around here to collect my resources or sorry my xp uh here you can see him running around you can speed up the process i want to skip the animation and there are, boom i have it 7000 xp in just like that a hut that you can definitely invest in is archaeologist smurf and this is a very useful mini game that you could do uh you could get prizes from here as well i don't have everything but it's okay so what you can do is dig basically you just gotta dig and here are the keys that you can use these sparkly things that has your that can give you resources or keys or items. So you just gotta go collect it. I just got 5,000 XP and five Stardust. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm not gonna be able to complete it because they give you five chances to dig and I have three left and I can see here that I'm not going to complete it. So if you wanted to complete all four, you would have to spend smurf berries. And in the beginning, I used to squander all of my smurf berries by doing that because I thought it was more efficient that way. But at the end of the day, there are better and different ways you can collect resources. And it's not guaranteed that you get something good every time. Sometimes I got like three XP boosts in a row and that kind of sucked. So here's the pirate smurf that I was talking about, uh, the mini game. This can give you resources. It's not guaranteed. It's kind of like a hot and cold kind of game where you, the hotter you are, the more closer you are to winning. Um, all right, I got the treasure chest. I got a lamppost, which is not really that great, but uh, I only got stone for that. I got five stone and a lamppost from playing pirate. Uh, sometimes I do get more. Sometimes I get stardust and different dyes and whatever, but it's not always guaranteed. Another way to get resources are actually rafts. I don't have a chance to because all of my smurfs are busy but uh if you scroll down you can get blueprints stone wood or dye no no stardust unfortunately but within like the 24 hours you can get two of those and i don't always do it just because i gain more just by using this so i don't necessarily use it but in the beginning of the game i think this would be a good investment just because if you're just coming in and out of the game every day it may give you a good amount of resources based on your playing methods and playing habits. Now onto the mountain. The mountain, oh, here. I forgot to mention that when you complete the engineer smurf, the train tracks that you see here, 
once you have all three of um, these stations, so I have a station here, right there, and I have another station here, and another station there. Obviously, I haven't connected my train tracks yet, but because I have all three, this main engineer hut smurf place can reward you pretty good resources. And if I do remember correctly, I do believe that these first initial uh, wonders don't actually need stardust. So if you're running low on stardust, but you have a good abundance of wood, stone, and dye, you can complete the windmill, the lookout, and the sand hourglass because like I said, Stardust is kind of tedious to collect, so if you don't have that, you can just use your initial resources to build these wonders first and get three extra smurf berries every week. So another thing I want to point out is you also have the ability to play archaeologist smurf on the mountain, which is also good because then you get double the amount of rewards. And see, I probably will be able to collect three this time. Oh, five stardust, an arch. Let's see what the last one will give me. Stone! Not too bad! But yeah, I won't be able to col collect all four. So you saw Archaeologist Smurf on the island and the mountain. Now, if you wanted to, on the island- uh, sorry, on the mountain, you can get Camper Smurf. And he is also an investment you can get. Archaeologist Smurf, Camper Smurf, Scuba Smurf, these are very important to the game. These, this is how I collect most of my resources, just on a daily basis. I'll just do free because I'm going to show you what I do. Um, yeah, it, it is sideways, so you'll just have to bear with me because I am on a computer, but for you guys, you might be using a device, so it'll be easier for you. I actually like this reward because you can get 8 star dust by using the free Camper Smurf version. Um, I got 6 right now. I, c I have 3 more, sorry, I have 4 more rocks. I could risk it and try to, to do it again, but I'm kind of happy with 6. But as you can see, you can get stone, stardust, a gift box. Um, big gift box, XP, die, and wood. When you do the five smurf berry boost, the stone and wood increase to about 130 to 140, I think. Die and stardust can increase to 40. So if you want, you can do that to gain resources faster, but it is risky because it's not always guaranteed. Also, another efficient way to get resources is digging. So you may have heard people talk about this, but if you, for example, look up, I think it's shovel. Yeah, okay, so a shovel. It's very similar to the, or the diving, scuba diving, because you could do 200 for one shovel or do two smurf berries for a golden shovel. You wanna save your smurf berries. You don't wanna overspend and you don't wanna spend something that you don't have much of. So for digging, I just, dig everywhere like i'll put it down make sure you have enough space to do it because it does take up quite a lot of space okay so when your 30 minutes are complete this the mini backhoe you do have to spend money on it like smurf berry money but once it's done it can actually dig up all your dig sites at once and a little thing that i noticed is when you dig up all with the backhoe some of the gems that you collect from these digs actually tr get turned into stardust, but I don't think it turns into stardust when you just pick it up as itself manually. So I think the backhoe does some sort of thing where you can get it, it like turns the gems into stardust. And one thing that you could do right here is get this gem collector, but it collects all your gems and puts it in here for you so you don't have to place it and delete it if you don't want them because they do fill up your uh, village quite a bit. So if we hippity hoppity to the swoof place. Now, this is going to be a big key component for getting stardust. This is where I do most of my stardust collecting. You get these crates when you clear out space on the swoof island or the swoof planet, sorry. So you see like how there's like this purple foresty thing here. This basically covered this entire region. Like this whole area was filled with these tree things. If you click on it, you can clear it out with this bird looking thing for 100 stardust. I think before, like the smaller areas, it was only 60, like 40 to 60. But now that since this is the last portion, it's more. Every single time you clear out an area, you get these dig sites and it drops a star or a crate. And most of the time, these crates can include items or it can include XP or smurf berries. When you're dusting the crates or the stardust, there is Sculptor Smurf you can get, and I think he's part of the Omnibus Tome, so you could look into getting his hut early on in the game as well. Getting his hut reduces the time of dusting these holes 
by half an hour. So I think it's actually an hour, but like if you get the sculpture smurf, he reduces it by 30 minutes. So that's pretty good because then every half hour, if you like go for lunch, come back, then you can collect your stardust. So you can also get archeologist smurf on the planet, but it's not a mini game, it's actually an excavation. So as you can see here, you can do a number of like wood, stone, dye, and stardust, or a shallow and deep excavation. I have 82 swoofs, and these swoofs are the ones that go inside the excavation sites to collect your stuff or your resources. And I always opt to do the stardust only because I collect wood and stone and dye from doing scuba smurfs, scuba, scuba diving. So. For me, it's worth it to do Stardust because then at least I know I'm going to get at least 10 Stardust every single day from doing these excavations. One other thing I wanted to mention is when you're collecting these crates and Stardust, when the crates there is a chance that you can get either an egg or a seed. I didn't realize this at the time, but there's a critter limit per area. And I think you can check that by going here. Yeah, there's 125 per area, I think. 34 out of 125, 82 out of 125. You have to keep in mind that the animals, these little critters that you can hatch, also take up space. So then that will reduce the amount of smurf or swoofs so that you can put in a biome. So I kept hatching these eggs and I didn't realize that now I can't add more swoofs because of these little bastards in my in my planet. Now, last but not least, there is the grove. This is my least uh, developed area. Usually what happens here is you can plant these flowers and you can get rare seeds. I honestly got most of my rare seeds from doing the traveler's hut, which I showed you in the beginning because I didn't have the grove at the time, but I kept collecting these rare seeds from the, the game. So actually my village event has become available. So let me show you what that's like. Okay, so there's these reindeers that are popping up around the village. Like there's one right there. Um, there's another one right there. And I have 90 seconds left with, and I have five out of 15. Most of the time you're able to complete them. It's not like it's too fast. It's happening too fast and you can't do it. It's definitely easier to do it when you have a smaller village because now I have a pretty big village with a lot of items so it can get lost if you're not careful enough. Now that I covered the tips and tricks that I think would be useful when you're collecting resources and building wonders and the do's and don'ts of like what I would suggest. Remember that there is literally no right or wrong when you're playing this game. Like you can do anything you want. I just find that the village events, some of the mini games, definitely the camper, archaeologist, scuba smurf, these are definitely the things that I rely on for my resources, as well as traveler smurf. So there's definitely a lot of different avenues you could use to gain that amount of resources you need for your wonders, but it's important to remember that you're just having fun when you're playing the game, so you don't want to stress too much about it. It's definitely taking me over a year to even achieve the spot that I'm at right now, so it wasn't a trip in the park for me. Like it took me a long time and I still have a bunch of different huts and village events that I want to buy, but I'm saving my Smurf berries for other things that would be beneficial. In terms of decoration, remember that there are a lot of different things that you could use that would enhance the vibe of your village. So what I typically like to do is go through the different options of Decoration, so pathways, walls, furniture, there's seating, decorations, laws, lawn and gardens. Sometimes I just go through the different possibilities and for example, there's this little heart-shaped pond, like that would be really nice in a, a Valentine's Day spot. What I typically do is find a theme. For example, I have this city theme, so I didn't initially like the road, but now that I did put it here, it does seem like it kind of fits the vibe. I wanted to have some sort of boardwalk, like as if you're on a beach, so I added like a boardwalk here. Um, a little outdoor movie theater. What I also tend to do is I go through different inspirations. There's like Facebook groups that you can go to and look at the different um, villages people have made and get inspiration from them. I saw this layout from someone, but then I turned it into my own because I liked the way it looked. This is like a 3D movie theater that I also got from someone on Facebook. And so I use this uh, movie strip wall to make it look like it's an outdoor building. So it kind of has that 3D shape to it. I know it's not because it's very 2D, but if you kind of think about it, it's a bit 3D. Well, I had a shoot ton of these sunflowers from playing mini games and I didn't want to throw it out. So I just kind of like turned it into a heart. So and like most of these items come to you in 
categories. So on the menu screen, there are, yeah, there are seasonal things that you can go through. So Valentine's Day, I looked at all the different Valentine's Day options. Uh, there's Halloween options that I was like looking at as well. Obviously, I don't have this, but if I did, I would buy it because it's pretty cute, but I don't have it. And Christmas as well, like a big portion of my Christmas uh, village came from this area as well. Oh, that's cool. Festive Bell Tower Wonder. I don't have that yet. One trick I saw from someone is they used glowing grass to make the ground for some of their areas. So I think glowing grass. Oh yeah, here it is. Glow grass patch. And oh yeah, don't forget, you have a limit to your pathways. 1800 and I'm already at 1600. So it fills up really quickly. This is really cute because you can put this down like right here, for example, you want this area to be a glowing thing, whatever. I'll put two. You don't like the blue. However, you can get Painter Smurf, and Painter Smurf will color literally anything in the village. Well, not literally anything. It'll highlight the things that you can color, but you get the color that you want. So for Valentine's Day, I want pink, and it turns it pink. So I did the same here with the Winter Wonderland. I used the glowing grass, but I'm kind of debating whether or not I should just buy the normal uh, snow block pathway because I think it looks a little nicer. You can also use different pathways and tiles for creating an illusion, for example. Like this is a fountain here, but underneath it is actually glowing grass, but I painted it blue so it looks like it's water. And trees, so you can also use a bunch of trees and shrubs to layer things. So there's a lot of hidden things, like for example, these water tiles of rocks, rock water, pebble stones, these many different logs I have here, pathways, and this is Lazy River's water tiles. So you need to get Lazy River to get these water tiles. So be mindful of that. And it is expensive, 2000 for just one tile. I definitely recommend at the early, early start of the game, start your farms, start planting, start thinking about what schedule you want so then you can come back and then pick up your crops so they don't wither. If you know you're gonna spend a lot of time in the game, do the blueberries, they're free, they give you some coins on the side and then that will help you gain income. Smurfy income, that's literally what this whole game is about. How can you make the biggest village based on what you have? It takes you a ton of time. I also like to plan out how I'm going to design my village before I complete a wonder. Like for example, this is a outdoor rock concert. So I kind of figured that I wanted to have it next to the main concert stage, as you can see here. So I start planning the decorations based on how I want my village to look once the wonder is complete. Like this, for example, I kind of knew I wanted a Smurfette Liberty statue in the middle of town. So I kind of like built this little square so then she can stand when her statue was complete. If you want to think about it ahead and see like how you want to lay out your village, before you start decorating and you want the wonders to be incorporated then I would recommend putting it down and then building around it so then when it is complete then you can kind of manage it and decorate your village based on that. This is just how I find what works for me. You don't have to do that. I just think that for me visualizing it before I actually build it is helpful because then I can kind of plan ahead see what I need to do, see how much money I need to collect, and then build it when I'm ready. Not to mention that all the different village events and mini games, they give you some loot on the side. Definitely, if you're going to spend time on the game, like try to utilize and maximize as much game, mini game playtime as you can, because then that will really pull in the amount of decorations and resources you get. Overall, I think I've said everything that I was planning on sharing with you today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment and let me know what you have done with your village. Oh, it's nighttime. Now we can show you my glowing grass. Yeah, you see, <laughs> it's really not that glamorous when you're looking at it from up here. I think it's way too bright, but it's not that bad. It's pretty cute. Oh, I think that's everything that I want to share with you today. The Smurf Village is a big, long process, and it's a very grindy game. So if you're ready to put in the hours and the time, and it's like a little da daily vitamin that you take in. So if you want to spend that time, keep these tips and tricks in mind because it's pretty useful when you're starting off and you still don't know how to manage the game. I think if I had known these earlier, it would have definitely helped me and saved me a lot of time and trouble. But I'm still enjoying the game. As you can see, it's like two years later, so I'm pretty happy with what I have so far and I'm still not done. So when I have more completion and I've done more advancement in the game, I can definitely share and I would love to see your villages too. 
leave a like and comment and send me a link to your village. Give me your username. I will definitely be happy to follow you back and we can give gifts to each other. And by the way, if you wanted to make friends, this is the way you would do it. You would just like go to your friends list and then you can go to their village and give them a daily little gift. So this is their village. You want to give them something. You can give them resources. So be nice. Give them resources because you know how hard it is. I'll give this person some dye. And there you go. You can give their little village a like. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!